Hey guys, and welcome to six top tips for using tanks in Foxhole. Just want to say big shout out to Lyndon and also Fraz for helping make this video today. Let's get into it. Number one, locking and squad locking your vehicle. It is so important guys that when you get into a tank, you must make sure the tank is locked. So if you press L on your tank, once you get inside your tank, you hear a certain sound like that and you'll see a symbol to the right of your screen, a padlock symbol indicating that your vehicle is locked. There is another important thing that you want to do, especially if you've got a, a squad of three people or more, you will want to squad lock your tank. And that way, uh, if the tank is squad locked, members of your tank can jump out and jump back into the vehicle without needing for you to unlock it, which is awesome. If it was not squad locked, they would have to wait for you to unlock it. And this can come, this can make a lot of problems happen with it, you know, later on down the line if you do not squad lock. So first of all, I'm going to lock the tank and you'll see that Fraz will not be able to get back inside the tank. So he's unable to get back inside the tank because I've just locked it like that. However, as he's inside my squad, if I click on assign to squad, as soon as that, he can now jump back into the tank by pressing Q. There you go, straight away back into the tank. And you can tell he's a squad mate because his name becomes kind of like a, a yellowy orange color. There you go, and I can jump back in as well. So always make sure your tank is squad locked. Number two, changing seats. Uh, tanks have many seats. If you want to switch seat, you, this is the, the driver's seat is always on the left hand side so you press Q to get into the driver's seat I pr press control 2 to switch to the gunner seat like so I can press R I reload the gun like so and then control 3 to switch to the commander seat commander seat I default start with the hatch down so I need to press E to get above open up the hatch and then generally when you're a commander the, the, you really want to be using binoculars so you can scout ahead and see enemies where they're moving, um, give your give coordination to your driver and things like that. The drive the the commander can also use a pistol to shoot enemy infantry that might be closing in on the tank. So I always recommend the commander to especially carry extra pistol ammunition. So maybe five to six clips of pistol ammunition so he can shoot enemy infantry that might be approaching the tank. You might you might save yourself here by shooting a infantry that's rushing with a sticky bomb, for instance. Very good idea. It's also very important as the commander to always have a radio equipped as well because you need to be able to spot on your mini map enemy presence and enemy movements. Without being able to do that, uh, you'll be blind and you might get flanked quite painfully. So the commander seat, you jump out from the rear. The other seat is the right side. And again, the, dri the driver's seat is on the left. Over here, we have the silver hand. Now, the silver hand actually has an extra seat here. You've got the driver's seat. You have the first gun to seat, which is the top, the 40 millimeter round gun, which is pretty much the same as the, the, the light tank one over here. Then if you press control three, you get into the 68 millimeter AT front. This is very good against armor. So this is like uh, the perfect type of to round that you want to hit enemy armor with. And then control four to get into the commander seat once more. Again, press E to open up the hatch. And like before, you can look out with your binoculars and shoot enemy with your pistol. The difference between this vehicle and the, the light tank is this actually has three slots. So you want to probably fill up the third slot here with extra beam so you can repair your tank. Um, the first two slots are for the diff two different ammo types, the 40mm round and the 68mm round for the two different turrets. Number three, your equipment. You'll want, always want to have a gas mask with at least a couple of extra filters. You'll always want your hammer and beam so that when you do take damage, you can jump out once obviously it's safe to do so and then repair the vehicle once it takes some damage so you always want to carry yourself some extra beam on you you never really want to be carrying a primary weapon because that obviously takes up a lot of uh a lot of a lot of weight so you want to save that weight space for beam mats. it's also not a bad idea especially if you're the commander to carry it with you a sticky bomb as well this way um if you if your tank becomes disabled in a one-on-one -on -one tank fight you can jump out and then run in and maybe lob that sticky bomb on their tank that, that also might be disabled that you're fighting against. And your 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 sticky bomb damage might be enough to, to help win that fight. Okay? Most people don't expect the tank crews to carry sticky bombs on them. So it's a, it's a good way to surprise your opponent. Uh, you, by adding carrying an extra sticky bomb, it's quite heavy a sticky bomb. So you do lose some BMAT space by doing so. But I think it's probably worth carrying the sticky bomb. If not only if you can't kill the enemy tank that you're engaging, but possibly to maybe scuttle to your own tank so it can't be stolen. Right? So you might want to blow it up with the sticky bomb so the enemies can't gas you out and then they steal it. That's the worst case scenario. Generally, 
If your tank is going down, you want to die with it because giving the tank over to the enemy is even worse than losing the tank. Um, also, not a bad idea always to carry it in a bandage. Bandage pretty much ne it doesn't weigh anything pretty much. It's always a good idea to carry an extra bandage, especially for the commander as well, because you might, get, in the commander seat, you can get shot at, uh, and then you might get bloody, so you might need to jump out and take cover behind your tank and then bandage yourself and then jump back in the tank so you're safe. Okay? So it's always a good idea to carry a bandage with you as well. When looking at the tank itself, guys, in the infantry, generally, anywhere between 30 to 50 rounds is generally a good amount of rounds to have for your light tank. That is enough to be able to take down enemy vehicles, be able to uh, keep you going for maybe half an hour to an hour on the front line. Any more than that is too risky, because if you lose the tank, you'll be losing a lot of rounds that could fall into the enemy hands. Also, when you destroy enemy tanks, um, there's a high chance of you recovering their rounds potentially, and then those rounds that you've used up during the fight, you will be able to regain through stealing the enemy ammunition on the ground. So generally, keep around about 30 to 50 rounds of ammunition in your tank. Number four, a quick one here, which is armor facing. It's very important to always try and make sure your tank is, the front is facing your opponent in every engagement. You want to make sure so let's say an enemy tank is in front of us, we've got our, our tank face this way. Let's say a tank was trying to flank us to the left as well, we would turn and face them on, on, onto that side. Why? It's because we've got more chance of, of the enemy rounds deflecting from the front, and they also do less damage from the front. Enemies hit you in the side or the rear, they do more damage. Okay, so always try and make sure that you have your tank facing forward towards your opponent. Number five, vehicle criticals. Okay, so I'm going to show you the first of three criticals. This first critical is going to be a fuel rupture. So basically, if you get shot in the rear, I'll shoot the silver hand rear right now. It could penetrate, could bounce, but what you'll see if it does receive a fuel critical, that will be visually seen by fuel leaking from the rear of the vehicle. So here we go. It's not a guarantee that this will happen to this vehicle with the rear crit, but it is possible. Just as long as you shoot the rear of the vehicle. So on that third hit, you can see here that the vehicle is now uh, leaking fuel. And if I was to check the vehicle itself, you'll see the fuel really quickly de decreasing. So now to stop that, you want to click on change fuel real quick. And that way, any fuel that was left remaining in the vehicle has been saved. And then once you've saved that fuel, then you must repair the vehicle back up to 100% to remove that critical. If you do not do that and just put the fuel back in, it will just be leaked straight back out and you'll lose all the remaining fuel and then you'll be stuck in the middle of nowhere potentially. So make sure to repair the critical fully and then you can then put the fuel back into the vehicle. Also notice the tank, this, the silver hand was nice and clean and now it is uh, taking uh, damage. It's lost armor. It looks like it's been battle worn. So to, to, to repair the armor fully on this vehicle, you have to take it back to a vehicle factory and repair it. So if I get my hammer out and start repairing it as well, and also as we saw, you know, it's taking a while to repair this vehicle because as we try it in the rear, it takes extra damage, right? So once we repair this fully, if I can actually get inside the vehicle myself, you'll see that we have a, you see the critical actually appear on the bottom, top left hand side. Here's the vehicle over here. You can see we've got no fuel left in it, and you have this e engine symbol here. What that symbol will disappear once this tank is fully repaired. Okay. So once we once we start repairing it, 93, 94. 95, I jump back in, I'm watch Fry, as you see, any second now that that symbol will disappear. There you go, it's disappeared, now I can refuel the vehicle, like so. Uh, although I remember I need to change the fuel back to get the fuel back, and then we just pop it into the tank, like so. There we go, done. So guys, here we go, if we want to repair the silver hand, we take it to a vehicle factory. Vehicle garage, jump out, press E, and then we click full repair. There you go, it takes about 100 minutes, and then you can see the silver hand is now top tip shape again. It's fresh out the factory again, and that's the way you can repair the armor. Have to go back to a vehicle factory, could not do this anywhere else in the game. So we're going to now have uh, Lyndon over here, he's going to shoot this light tank, and he's going to try and shoot the tracks, and you'll see the second critical, which is um, damaged tracks. Basically, this cripples the, the movement of the vehicle very significantly, making it very vulnerable. So if Lyndon, if you want to just try and shoot the tracks... There we go. So you can see now I've got a, the the he's he aimed at my tracks and I've now received a damaged track symbol on the bottom top left hand side over here. Um, and now you can see how much slower I am. I am incredibly vulnerable, easy to flank. Infantry can easily catch up to me and lob sticky bombs. So this is a very dangerous critical, and you want to make sure to repair it. It's very easy to tell you've been tracked as well because you know, like the tracks are kind of shaking as you're moving along. So to repair this, we jump out, get our hammer, and we start repairing it. 
And once more, it needs to be 100% to remove the critical. So now the critical is about to be... There you go, it's removed. Okay, the critical's gone. And now I'm just going to drive like normal, just to, sh to show you the normal speed of the tank. You can see, there you go, back to normal, working perfectly fine. Okay, we're going to do now the third critical. I'm just going to get Lyndon now to try and shoot the uh, the main gun of the tank. For the, f for the third and final critical to, to receive a main gun destroyed critical. Um, Lyndon, when you're ready, far away. There we go, perfect. First shot, first time. There you go. You can clearly see the main gun has been destroyed because there's a big puff of smoke around the center of the vehicle, around the turret. Again, when we get in the vehicle, you can see again, top left-hand side, you can see the symbol at the top, which says uh, this little thing here. It's like um, some sparks coming in from the turret. And we and in, like this, we cannot fire back. So if I'm now in the drive in, in, into the turret seat, the, the turret is locked in position and I can't even fire. There you go. And once the critical has been repaired, you'll see the smoke stop. And, once you're in, and again, once you're in the driver's seat, you can clearly see that there is no critical on the tank. Um, there we go. So that was the three critical states of the vehicle. So you saw um, fuel rupture, tracks being critically hit to slow you down, and also the main gun destroyed, which means you can't fire the tank. All very dangerous uh, criticals to receive. And if you do receive one of them, you need to try and get out of fighting as soon as possible and try and repay yourself up, back up to full health. And now you know about those criticals, when you're trying to aim at enemy tanks, always try to aim at those specific locations. So try and aim at the enemy's main gun to disable their turret. Hit their tracks to try and to try and get, give a track critical. Or if they, their rear is showing, try and hit them in the rear to hopefully aim for a fuel rupture. So guys, I forgot to talk about one of the other critical states for the tanks, and that is the large stage critical. Basically, you'll hear a certain noise, and there'll be some white smoke appearing from the engine of the tank. This will mean that the tank has received the immobilization critical, and it's on its, on, on its last legs, basically. It's hardly got any health left, and maybe one or two shots will finish it off. So you can see here, it's 28%. And uh, we're in the tank and we can't move it possibly at all. It's damaged, it needs repairs. If you see that, you need to jump out and start hammering away and try and repair it. So when it comes to repairing, uh, certain tanks, guys, that each have a different um, percentage that they need to get up to to remove this last critical. You don't have to repair it to 100% to get rid of this uh, immobilization critical. So you can see here, once we've repaired this tank up to 30%, uh, we're, now, we're now able to drive it again. However, now we're out of fuel. Uh, obviously, if we had fuel, we could drive it around. But you get the idea. So for this tank, it needs to be 30% or more to be able to drive. Trucks themselves, uh, they actually get that. They can they get in this immobilization critical uh, at a much higher percentage. I believe it's like about 80% uh, below 80%. Uh, they will receive a uh, immobilization critical. So um, yeah, trucks are super fragile. Well, tanks are, are not in that you know in that instance. Number six, threats to tankers. So guys, first threat is mines. In tanks, do not ever try to run over mines. Always be cautious going down roads. On, on roads themselves, mines will be clear and visible. However, just off the side of the roads, mines won't be clear. These mines are friendly mines, which means we have visibility of them at all times. However, even if we run over them, we will take damage. And I believe only it takes like two mines for you to lose of your vehicle, potentially. So I'm going to run over this mine here. You can see that we've taken uh, we've taken damage, and you can see that we've also taken a critical. Um, we're also critically disabled as well as our track has been hit. So never try and run over mines. You also can see a big crate to the ground once it's, you've hit a mine, and you also take a lot of damage. So we, do, we took about thirty eight percent damage there from that one mine. So yeah, always want to make sure be careful about hitting mines. To watch for mines, whenever you go down and you're going in uh, uh, in friendly territory or enemy territory, you want to just jump out. And then when you jump out of your vehicle, you'll see the mines, if you, even if they're off the road. And then you get a wrench to wrench them. So, Fraz, if you want to come over here and start wrenching these mines for me, um, you can equip a wrench. You crouch and you left mouse click. And that way, uh, you can disable and remove mines uh, and get rid of them and clear a pathway that you want to go down to attack your opponents, potentially. Next, we're going to talk about the probably the next threat you'll see with infantry, which is the sticky bomb rush. Probably the most common thing you'll see. So um, we're just going to get Fraz and Lyndon here. They're going to equip sticky bombs. Whenever you see a sticky bomb guy rushing you, this clear. You can see it in their hands. If you guys just want to stay still for a quick second, just so that the guys in the stream and the, the recording can see this. So you can see they have the sticky bombs in their hands there. If you see that, you always want to try and drive away from them. Keep yourself um, far away. If you guys just want to run at me from the front, from the south. Okay, they're coming in now. So I just want to make sure I want to run away. And as he tries to lob the, the sticky bomb... I want to try and make sure I'm looking behind me so I've got a clear line of reverse. 
so I'm not getting in trouble. And generally, your tanker should try and be shooting them as well as the commander should try and be shooting these guys with his pistol. You don't want these sticky bombs to get at you because if they hit you like this, oh, your weapon's restricted, are you? There you go. So sticky bomb lands you like that. Once it hits you, you can't dodge it once it's hit you. And you could receive a damage engine. Um, sorry, a fuel leakage, or maybe your truck gets hit as well. And one sticky bomb, that one penetrated, that did 19% damage. So if a few connect from a few people at a time, you could be, you could easily be destroyed. So always keep an eye out for sticky bomb rushes. The wardens themselves have the AT flask. This looks like this. They're carrying a flask, pretty similar to a sticky bomb, but has a longer throw range. I'll just do a demonstration of that. You can see they love it like that, and that does uh, a decent amount of damage to vehicles as well. One other uh, weapon you want to watch for is the anti-tank rifle. This anti-tank rifle has eight rounds in it. Uh, this could disable tracks. It generally won't do too much damage, um, but it will eventually penetrate and will could disable tracks as well. So, wanna, uh, or maybe even the main gun potentially. So, uh, uh, watch out for these guys. Um, not, not again, not too much damage this thing does, but again, over time it will do quite a bit of damage. So you want to avoid uh, getting shot by these guys too much. A group of guys with ATR rifles will quite quickly take down a tank, actually. So watch out for that. Linden over here has an RPG. Does a lot more damage than my gun that I have at the moment. And a few of those guys all lined up aiming at one tank and will will quickly take down a tank as well. So uh, try and watch out for um, for these types of uh, AT weaponry. Got one more type of AT weaponry here, which is uh, the bone saw. So this is the warden bone saw. This can actually you know, lob, lob this over defenses and things like this because it's got a curve. And this is also very good against armored vehicles. You can also put a tri have this on a tripod to increase its range. Um, so watch out for, for one of these uh, types of weaponry. There are a few other weapons I can't really show you at the moment because I'm playing the Wardens. But the Colonials have other weaponry, weapon like the Panzerfaust, which is called the Igni Fist in this game. Uh, which is like a one-shot kind of uh, rocket that fires off, which does quite a lot of damage to vehicles as well. So just bear in mind, any, any infantry squad that has some kind of AT in their hand, just be be aware of them. Try and take them out if you can do. It's much better wasting, we wouldn't say wasting 40 millimeter rounds, because you're saving yourself if, you, if you're firing off the rounds on the units that could potentially kill you. Uh, make sure they kill those units off, and then get your own infantry to recover those weapons. Uh, we're just going to now go on to the enemy AT defences that you've got to watch out for. So there's three types of AT defences you want to watch out for. It would be uh, the AT turret, the garrison AT turret, and the EAT. So here we have an anti-tank gun turret. It has a 360 degree arc, and it can be built with a hammer for 100 beam. That's once you have the required tech. So if you shoot it with a tank from the rear, it'll turn around and shoot you. This is You don't really want to ever engage with this... Uh, as a solo tank, maybe if you have three friendly tanks firing at the same time, you might be able to take it out. But generally, if you ever draw, want to try and solo this, you want to attack it from the rear and then hide your tank behind some kind of uh, line of sight blocker. So let's say here we have a tower, for instance, for instance here. If our tank was, was, was positioned here, for instance, we rolled up, took the shot, and then we rolled back behind the tower, and the tower would block the, the, the returning fire from, from, the, uh, from, from, the, from the turret from shooting us. So make sure... If you are soloing this, you always want to try and hit it from like the rear and then pull behind some line of sight blocker so this thing can't fire upon you, okay? Because it can't shoot through walls and things like that, which is awesome to know. Now over here we have the anti-tank turret as a garrison, part of a bunker network. So again, this is a, a for something you do not want to attack from head on. It's a, it's a lot, lot stronger than your standard anti-tank turret like this one over here. Um, however, the one thing about this is that it can't shoot behind itself. As you can see... The turret can shoot 180 degrees in front of itself, generally, um, but it can't shoot from behind itself. So if you attack it in the rear, you'll be fine. Never engage this from the front, otherwise you will be destroyed. This thing is very good against countering armor. So here we have the concrete version of the AT turret. This is what it looks like here. And you definitely don't want to be shooting this with your tank. This will absolutely destroy you in seconds. Uh, but yeah, don't ever attack this from the front. The only acceptable time, guys, is when to shoot these defenses from the front is when they're offline. So you can tell that if the flag is tiny, you can see these flags are full, uh, which means that the AI is active and they will be responding to enemies um, if they are in range or if they get fired upon. So this here is an EAT. It comes with 68mm rounds. It will use 68mm rounds, which is very effective against armor. It also can be dropped into an entrenched emplacement, which makes it even stronger and harder to kill. You don't really ever be wanting engaging one of these with tanks again. You want your infantry to clear that. It's also worth noting that when you're uh, even in the commander seat of a tank in the fog of war, you won't be able to see it. So we know we know it's over there, but we can't physically see it because it's night time. Also, if these things are hidden in bushes, we won't be able to see them either. Only when we roll up onto it directly, we'll be able to see it. Like so, okay. So you can see my max range is where my white line finishes at the end there. So if I let Linden, you know, come forward, like you know, he doesn't know. 
because it's night time, we can creep forward, creep, keep, keep, creep, creeping forward, and then I can wait for him to get super close, and then I can smash him really hard. And even if I fire, it'll be hard for him to see even spot me until he comes super close, um, because uh, he'll only be able to see the smoke trail, and the smoke trail is quite small, and, and uh, after, after a while it disappears. So if he's not looking the right way at the right time, I can still just keep, you know, pounding away at him, and in generally most tank crews panic and try to reverse away, but by... By after landing maybe two or three shots in into his tank, as it's a light tank, it's likely to get disabled and, and uh, it'll quickly go down to 68mm round. So definitely at night time, guys, you want to be super careful with your vehicles because you don't know what's lurking around every corner, especially around like buildings as well, because just assume enemy infantry might be hiding around um, the houses and ready to pounce on you with AT weaponry as well. So super always be, especially at night time, I, um, generally at night time, I would avoid using tanks, uh, personally. I would use the only in really daytime and at night time, park the tanks up and then try and act, act, go on foot as infantrymen. Because um, the same applies not only with these EAT turrets, but also um, F-80 field anti-tank guns as well. The ones that you can, infantry can move around. They'll also smash you up as well because they also carry the same ammunition types. So watch out for that. So here we have an EAT in a entrenched emplacement. As you can see here, this is a concrete one. It's just the concrete is wet, which means it's uh, kind of vulnerable at the moment. But once it's just dry, it'll be a lot better being in this emplacement than if it was just out in the open. One more thing, guys. Watch out for mobile anti-tank guns like the field anti-tank gun, also known as the FAT. Here we have the FAT, also known as the field anti-tank gun. So this is the one where two people need to push it. And again, it uses the 68mm rounds. This can hide in bushes. And again, at night time, it cannot be spotted um, with binoculars. So this will also mess armor up quite badly. Uh, if you're trying to counter one of these things, the best thing to do is try to shoot to the size of your tank with 40mm rounds. That way you're likely to um, kill the guy on the weapon, and then you may be able to flank round and finish the gun off. But, it does take a lot of uh, rounds to finish and kill this off, and you never want to be soloing one of these um, things as a tanker. You want to, you generally want your infantry to rush it and clear it off with gas grenades and things like that. So watch out for an FAT like these. So there you guys go, that is the end of the video. If you found it enjoyable, please do hit that subscription button. We'd really appreciate it. I've got more Foxtel content and other tutorials up here. And if you want to watch my company Heroes 2 content, check out over here. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.